Hey guys, welcome back to a new video by Biology Resumption. So today we are doing the last paper of the specimen series, which is the Cambridge IJCIC Biology Paper 6, Alternative to Practical for Examination from 2023. So if there are any questions, please do drop down in the comment section. I will try to rectify it as soon as possible. Let's start it. So question one, catalase in the enzyme found in plant and animal cells. It catalyzes the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide to form water and oxygen. So the oxygen produced forms a foam. You can measure the height of the foam to determine the catalase activity. A student investigated the catalase activity in cooked and uncooked potato tissue. So just have a read of the steps provided and I will try to come back if there are any questions uh, required to refer. So let's start off with figure 1.1 shows the test tube after 3 minutes. So they give you uncooked and cooked potato. A part 1, prepare a table to record your results. Measure the height of the foam in each of the test tube in figure 1.1. Record these measurements in your table. So uh, I need to draw a table definitely with columns, two columns and then about three rows. And I put one as the cooked potato and one is the uncooked potato. So where do I get the height of the foam? It's by measuring this length and this length and minus them off. You will get the difference. This is your height of the foam. If for this one, it's the same thing. You measure this and you measure this and you will get the height of the foam also. So what I got is 0 0.9 and 3.0. The answer may differ, so please do check the mark scheme to check whether your values is within the specific range. And part 2 asks, calculate the difference in the height of the foam produced by the cooked and uncooked potato after 3 minutes. So after 3 minutes, just take this value minus this value and you will get 2.1 centimeter. Again, do check the mark scheme again to check for the range for your answer. It should be part of it if, you're, if you do not have any errors in your calculation. Part 3. State one conclusion for these results. So one conclusion for what, I'm, for what I've seen is that the uncooked potato produces more foam than the cooked potato. B. Part 1. Identify the independent variable in the investigation. So the independent variable lies in this column. They have one cooked potato and one uncooked potato. And if you look back, the actual difference is between the treatment of the potato because one is cooked and one is uncooked. So this is your answer, the treatment of the potato. Part 2. State why it is important that the two potato cylinders were identical in shape and size. So when they have the same, same shape and sizes, right, it means that they have the same surface area. So this is a key answer. Same surface area we relate to shape and size. Part 3. State two other variables that were kept constant in this investigation. Very simple. If the, if the dependent variable is about measuring the form and they definitely have added something in, that solution is always the key to your answer. So instead for this question is hydrogen peroxide solution. So I talk about the concentration and the volume. This is a combo free mark. If you have concentration and volume, you get your two marks already. Okay. C. Identify one possible source of error in the method used in this investigation. So throughout this investigation, even when you are measuring, you can see that the foams are uneven. And that is a source of error because they can give a little uh, measurement difference with some of the holes because the, the foam is giving a different position also. So this is one of the answers. Okay, D. A student stated that catalase activity is the same in all species of plant. Plan an investigation to test this statement. Okay, so this six months, uh, six months question I always use. I don't care. So run away. So I is IV, D is DV, C is CV, S is safety, uh, R is repeat, and A is average. If there are numer numerical values, so the IV. So they have stated that in all species of plant. So for this experiment, I want to test whether it's the same, right? So I use three different plant species. Then I will place the leaf into the test tube and add a same volume and concentration of hydrogen peroxide. From here, I get two marks already, which is for my constant variable. Enough already. The next one, DV. 
Measure the height of the foam collected from the gas serene. This is very important. Whenever you want to measure the gas volume, you must mention uh, either gas syringe or inverted measuring cylinder. Then you use a ruler to measure the foam, same as the first part of the question. And then you compare with other species. The control, you can add a control to this investigation. Control meaning like, do you think that by adding this, does it affect the result? So for this one, I will test using a boy leaf. Why a boy leaf? Because the enzymes inside the leaf have been denatured when it's in higher temperature. So when I add hydrogen peroxide, we will still change. And the safety is to wear gloves as hydrogen peroxide is corrosive and the replication is of repeat, repeat two or three times. This is how you get your six marks. You can either write in the, this point form or in paragraph form, either way will work. E. Potatoes contain starch. Starch can be broken down into reducing sugars. Describe the test to identify starch and reducing sugar and give the result of the positive test. This is very simple. If you memorize this uh, very, very in detail, this should be in your brain already. So the starch is by adding iodine solution and the positive test will turn blue-black in color. Reducing sugar, add benedict solution and heat up. Heat is a very important keyword. This represents one mark. Heat up to 80, 70 to 80 degrees and the result will turn to brick red color. Question 2. A wood louse is a small animal. The rate of respiration of a wood louse can be measured using a simple respirometer as shown in figure 2.1. As the wood louse respires drop the color liquid and move along the capillary tube. So this is between the start and 30 minutes. It means that it went to the left hand side. So record the start of the drop of the color liquid in the capillary tube shown in figure 2.1 at the start and after 30 minutes. So I got 45 mm as a start and 5 mm after. So again, these results, check the mark scheme and make sure your values are inside the range. And part two is just to calculate the distance move uh, within 30 minutes. So take this as a difference and you get 40 mm. Part 3. Calculate the rate of movement of the drop of color liquid in mm per minute. Okay, the keyword is per minute. So do not change your uh, units to seconds uh, without the question saying. So it says per minute and you know the whole journey is about 30 minutes. So I will take 40, which is the difference of this one. Divide by 30, I get 1.333, but you're not done yet. They say in one decimal place. So you run off to 1.3 mm per minute minute b uh, the rate of movement of the drop of color liquid along the respirometer can be used to estimate the rate of respiration a student used a respirometer in investigate the rate of respiration in four animal species the results are shown in table 2.1 and part one asks you to calculate the missing mean of four animal species a write your answer in table 2.1 so you take this 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 Divide by 3, you get 1.5. Very simple mathematics. Part 2. Plot a bar chart, okay? They say a bar chart, not a line graph this time. To show the mean rate of movement of the drop of the colored liquid in the capillary tube for the four animal species. They have given you, this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis. So this is how it will look like, okay? So a bar chart has separate uh, in the middle. Histogram is the one that is combined together. So be careful, do not... Uh, differentiate wrongly with this, okay? Part 3. State the letter of the animal species which has the highest rate of respiration. Very simple, the tallest one, which is animal species C. Part 4. Suggest a suitable control for the investigation described in 2B. So a control is something that, uh, why if I add another variable, will it affect the result? So for this is that I replace wood lice. Since wood lice is a living material, I place with an inert one. Inert means it cannot react with anything. It's basically like just there, doesn't do anything. So this is my answer. Part 5. The student decided it would be better to calculate the rate of respiration per gram of animal so that the values could be compared. Describe how the students could find the rate of respiration per gram of animal. So usually it's always mass divided by the respiration rate. So I will measure the mass of the animal in grams and then divide the respiration rate Okay, with it. You should get your answer. C. Figure 2.2 shows a photograph of a wood louse. Okay, so it's P to Q in the magnification of times 9. Part 1. Draw a large diagram of the wood louse in figure 2.2. So 
just draw a big diagram make sure it fills up the space and then just follow you don't really have to follow this detail just follow these lines okay the outline of it these two tails i would say basically the whole diagram the antennas and then the middle lines that's all okay part two the magnification of the wood louse in figure 2.2 is times nine measure the length of the line pq in figure 2.2 so use a ruler to measure and again it has a range of it i got 48 mm if your ruler is in centimeter convert it to mm times by 10. then calculate the actual width of the wood louse using the formula and your measurement give your answer in three significant figures together with a working so i will take i m so since this one i have the actual length i want i uh, i have the length i don't have the actual length so what i do is that i take uh this m divide i mean the i divided by m i get 5.33 your answer will be 5.33 okay so that is all for this paper thank you so much for listening uh 